Thank you so much, John. Okay, our next speaker, uh, legend of all legends. I didn't have the pleasure, was a little bit before my time, but I did have the pleasure of sitting in his uh, English class throughout the entirety of my senior year at Edison High School and listening to a many fine tale of, of Beowulf. None other than Mr. Eric Emery. Clearly, we're here to celebrate. Okay, we're here, here to celebrate and, and uh, retire uh, lifeguard ordinaire, extraordinaire Steve Hicks. Well, uh, others are going to spread the frosting, but I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, Steve's start, how it came about. Like Steve Hicks, I used to be a lifeguard. Started with HB City in uh, 59, spent a few Woo! years as a hospital corpsman in the Navy and as a field medic with the Marines. Uh, came back to start college and, and, and start guarding for state in 59. So used that uh, medic training to start training lifeguards. And through the, that happened through the 60s. And during those decades, our state program was came to life. He was given birth and it, it grew up. Taught English and coached water polo and swimming at Edison High School. Trained more lifeguards like uh, Lee Graham, Greg Scott, Finn McClafferty, <coughs> Mike Broussard, just to name a few. That the list goes on. Broussard wrote a book about life saving, called it uh, Warm Winds and Following Seas. It's a good read. Taught uh, junior lifeguards too. That turned out to be a good thing. Just ask Lonnie Graham. <laughs> we followed the same uh, basic plan as uh, the regular lifeguard training, but on a smaller scale. A 1973 photo of uh, Lonnie <coughs> shows him uh, as our uh, junior guard running champ. His big brother Lee Graham, looking proudly on, he was one of the trainers. My son Chris was in that program too. Uh, like that smaller scale, uh, Lonnie uh, uh, towered about four feet tall in those days, and then he grew up to be another outstanding lifeguard. Yeah. Steve Hicks didn't go through the regular lifeguard training. Steve was in the Comprehensive Employment and Training Act. C-E-T-A, CETA for short. And wow, did Steve have a good time. The CETA program was a, a government-funded thing, uh, and, and it played out at Bolsa Chica State Beach. Some of you may be familiar with that place. Terribly windy at times. Well, CETA allowed Steve to train for the whole summer. paid for with U.S. government dollars. <laughs> a 1979 group photo of the uh, CETA group is with all of the, of the lifeguards from the state, uh, and, and the CETA group is over on the far left of that, of that uh, picture. It's over there someplace. Steve Hicks is located front row, middle. Behind Steve is Ronnie Tassin. Yeah. Herb White, Herb White and Gus Avila were in that, in that CETA program too. Gus looked like a runaway Apache warrior in those days. <laughs> Some of you may not, may not believe this, but Herb and, and Gus even got into trouble once. <laughs> I had, had to shake my finger at him and, and, look, and look real mean. My students at Edison High School about grade time would say to me, Mr. Emery, you're mean. I would say, no, I am not mean. I'm cruel. <laughs> well, Mike Bartosh and yours truly warmed the cedars up every morning with calisthenics, and then we would all uh, 
swim a couple of bolsa buoys just to warm up. And then we'd go through some uh, drills on, uh, life, on lifeguard procedures and first aid. Even had him sit with a uh, seasoned large lifeguard for a while. Even got into a, into a few uh, real rescues with him. Well, then we'd uh, end our day with mock rescues and some uh, victory at sea bolsa buoy swims. <laughs> our, our seniors also got to uh, enjoy long runs each day. But I'm sure Steve and Gus and Herb will tell you that their favorite was the Colossus. They would run from the Bolsa Chica headquarters down to the HD pier, swim the pier, run back to Bolsa and finish off with a refre refreshing Bolsa buoy swim. <laughs> so you can see they had some good training. <laughs> well, along with Steve Hicks, uh, uh, you'll recognize some of the other names that I've mentioned, like uh, Lonnie Graham, Gus Avila, Greg Scott, and Ronnie Tasson. I was, I was really lucky to be a part of starting them off in life saving, and starting a lot of you off in life saving as well. Okay, really I'm wrong. I wasn't lucky. I was blessed to do that, to be a part of that. So now here's the point. We've all watched Steve Hicks grow up to be an honorable and honored and outstanding lifesaver. what I consider a, a worthy step beyond in instilling his devotion and his love of our, of our system and of our life saving to the park aids. And so I'm now honored to congratulate Steve for a job well done. Well done, Steve. share with you the fact that I am slightly disappointed that Steve was not chosen the Coppertone Kid. 